We're going to convene back into open session here. Uh, at this time, nothing to report out of closed session. We're going to convene or continue with uh, item G, presentations. So at this time, we have several uh, schools and students to recognize, uh, beginning with item G1, highest attendance for month six, and this being Jefferson Elementary School. Mr. Avina, would you come forward? All right. So, can I also have uh, and give a round of applause to Ms. Hansen for Dual School? They were um, they were month month five when it comes to the highest attendance, and so now they're passing on the trophy per se to our new school who has the highest attendance for month six, which is Jefferson Elementary School. So let's give them another big round of applause, please. And we also have a banner that will be put at their school site if we can. We'll continue with item G2. This will be student representatives from our school sites. I see our students are ready. We're going to begin first with Aurora. I believe we have Andy Herrera. Testing, testing. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Board of Trustees and Acting Superintendent. My name is Andy Herrera. I'll be representing Aurora's Eagle's Nest and give the report of this month. March 7th, student took the ASVAP Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, which was administered by Staff Sergeant Lopez, and it was a minimum, minimum day that day. March 15th, we took the AccuPlacer for people to, uh, the entrance exam for IVC, got a couple of seniors who took it. March 20th, we got the CET, Center for De Employment Training, came to give a presentation. During the month, uh, month of March, we are testing students on the LPAC, March 21st, approximately 25 ASSIS students went to the movies to watch the movie Black Panther. March 26th, it's coming soon, we are hosting open house and our school site council meeting. From March 26th to March 28th, we'll be having the Eagle Olympics and Free Dress Week. On Monday, we start with the dodgeball, student versus student. Tuesday, students will participate in Trivia quack, uh, Crack, a question and answer game. On Wednesday, we captured the chicken, among other field events and relays during including tug of war, my favorite. And enjoy your spring break when that happens. I know I will. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board, staff, parents, and students. My name is Daniela Cortez, and I'm Calexico High School student representative. On March 5th, we held a madness pep rally during sixth period, in which students that had the best attendance would be, to, would be invited from the high school and the ninth grade campus. This pep rally was themed safari, and we had the drumline and the powder puff seniors cheer team perform. On March 5th, we had our powder, powder puff game as well. The powder puff game consisted of junior versus seniors girls participating in a flag football game, and senior boys participated to be cheerleaders and support their senior girl football players. 
Also on March 5th, Calexico High School participated in the madness event held at the Imperial Valley Fair. We had our varsity cheer team and drumline perform. We also had many students that participated in the madness game events. On March 14th, we hosted an assembly for the students at 10 o'clock a.m. for 17 minutes. This assembly was organized in order to acknowledge the Florida school shooting that took place on February 14th. The message for this assembly was to teach and inform students to be kind to one another. Throughout that day, we held a quorum during lunch in order for students to express themselves and their feelings about their issues concerning school shootings. On March 21st, which was today, which was yesterday, Calexico High School held a ceremony during lunch for Down Syndrome Day in which we celebrated Eddie Day. On March 27th, Circle of Friends will have an egg hunt at Kermit Park. CHS will have open house next Tuesday on March 27th, and students will be released at 1.40, and Easter break will start on March 29th. Thank you for your attention, and may you all have a nice spring break. Good evening, my name is Johnny Valenzuela, and today I will be talking about the events for March and the past events we've done at Dianza. Firstly, our Pennies for Patients charity event is going well. We have collected over $804. We will continue this charity event for next week. Our goal is to reach over $1,000 for patients with leukemia or lymphoma. Our next event we will be holding is Easter Egg Hunt for Circle of Friends. Students along with their friends will hunt for Easter eggs around the campus during period four and lunch next Tuesday. Another event we will be planning is our spring pep rally to introduce our spring sport athletes. The theme for our pep rally is a beach theme. This year we are holding the annual Bernie Ball where the top 150 students who have succeeded academically will be able to be congratulated with their own dance. This year's theme for our Bernie Ball is the award show. That is all the announcements for this month. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Johnny. From Enrique Camarena, Adrian Campos. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Adrian Campos wasn't available to come, so I'm filling for her spot. My name is Belen Campos. <laughs> so in the month of March, we finished the LPAC testing. Then we had no classes on the second because of the fair, which we hope that everyone had fun there. Then on Saturday the 3rd, we had our second annual geeky track races. Uh, last week, we had our spirit week in which every day there is a different theme. Monday was Camo Day, Tuesday was Neon, Wednesday we had Mathletes versus Athletes, Thursday was Tie-Dye Day, and Friday was Wear Green in honor of St. Patrick's Day, which was on Saturday. On March the 14th, which was last Wednesday, we celebrated Pie Dye with a little friendly pie eating competition for both boys and girls in both 7th and 8th grade. And a pie memorization competition for both girls and boys combined in both grades as well. Our winner memorized over 70 digits for this competition. Last Friday, our eighth grade AVID students went on a field trip to UC Irvine and Six Flags. On s that same Saturday, our band and orchestra, orchestra uh, went to the festival at Southwest High School. They brought our school to excellence. That same Saturday, we had our MESA competition, which our school also brought first place for the prosthetic arm competition. Then, yesterday, we had our successful open house, which was another successful parent participation event. Tomorrow will be the end of the third quarter. And finally, the m we will have the most exciting event of the year, field day, which we invite you to join us for some fun time. Then the day after March 29, we start spring break and are out for 11 days and come back on April 9th. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> From Willie Moreno, Brianda Montaño. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brianda Montaño, and I am a part of ASB in Willa Moreno Junior High. Today, I will share the events we have planned for the month of March. On March 3rd, students took a trip to UCSD. You could only participate in this if you signed up as space was limited. On March 5th through 9th, we had Spirit Week. On Monday, March 5th, we had Dr. Seuss T 
T-shirt or hat day. On Tuesday 6th, we had our favorite band singer T-shirt day. On Wednesday, March 7th, we had cartoon character day. On March 8th, we had meme day. But not least, on Friday, March 9th, we, did, we dressed up as a rock star or famous person. On this same day, we had our annual lip sync battle, in which only one student took part in. Our last picnic of the year. On March 14th, we took part of the national walkout in which students got out of Block 4 at 10 a.m. to pot protest against gun violence. On March 21st, we had open house from 6 to 7.30 p.m. The ASB club sold water, sodas, and chips. Our Aztecs cheerleaders sold bolis and churritos. On Wednesday, March 28th, we were having an ice cream show. Students had to use their passes less than two times and will get an ice cream sandwich. Along with the ice cream social, we will be having an attendance celebration. This celebration is taking place because William Moreno had the highest attendance ranking for the month of February. We've maintained a 96% attendance. Those were all the events we had for the month of March. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. And students, thank you for sharing the wonderful things happening on your campuses. We want to move on to item G3, and this would be Students of the Month Recognitions. And we'll begin with Aurora. Once again, Aurora. And we have two students, Melissa Cardenas and Javier Ramirez. Unfortunately, she was not able to attend, but I'll still give the interview I gave. After graduation, she plans on continuing her studies, but first she's going to enlist in the Army. She is undecided on what, uh, on what to study, but that plan on the IVC is still going there. It looks more likely she's going to go into the law enforcement field, specifically the Customs and Border Protection. Reason for joining the military is because two of her cousins were former Army, Army veterans. They explained the benefits and help she can receive if she joins. Uh, after school activities, she enjoys doing is training in flag football. That's it for hers. Next is Javier Ramirez. His is after graduation, he plans to go on IVC everybody does, and go into the field of medicine to work as a paramedic. Is or I'm something. sorry, is Javier here? No, he ain't here. He's, oh, he's not you. here either. My bad. Not again. Or something similar to that field of medicine. He's not so sure. Reason for his interest of line of work is because he had a first-hand experience of what paramedics did to try or save a life. His after-school activities is to take, his daughter, to take care of his daughter, Anna, who is eight months old. Javier improved greatly while he was at Aurora High School, and he enjoys playing soccer as an after-school activity. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. And we'll continue with Calexico High School. Jennifer Hernandez and Christian Diaz. Jennifer is here. Jennifer, why don't you come on up? And uh, can we have Jennifer's parents also come up, please? Jennifer Hernandez has a 4.3 GPA and is a and member Jennifer's of Jennifer's parents, please come up. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Jennifer Hernandez has a 4.3 GPA and is a member of the California Scholarship Federation. She's been on the varsity tennis team as a doubles player for the past two years. She also plays flute in the high school band. Jenny's plans after high school is to attend UC Davis in the fall as an animal science major. She plans to become a veterinarian. Jenny was asked about one great thing in her experience at Calexico High School, and she stated, one great thing about Calexico High School would be that we have teachers that genuinely care about their students. Congratulations, Jenny. Christian Diaz, is he here? Hmm. You want to go ahead and read his bio? Mm -hmm. Christian Diaz has a 4.02 GPA, for which he says he has worked hard to achieve. He's been an avid soccer player since he was 10 and plays for the school team. He helped start the ping pong club and is also part of the psychology club. Christian has received acceptance letters from several California universities, including Chico, Long Beach, uh, Los Angeles, and Davis. He plans to major in psychology. In Christian's own words, he says, many people criticize Calexico High School because it is not as luxurious as other schools in the Imperial Valley. However, one thing I like about my school is that the teachers are very accessible and will help students who are struggling. Since most classrooms have 30 students, it is e easy to talk with teachers after class and clear my doubts on what is being learned. Many teachers have certainly helped me do well in my studies and have motivated me to keep on working hard after high school. Congratulations. Congratulations. Let's continue with Calexico High School, ninth grade campus. We have Josie Hernandez and Alejandro Mendez. Josie, Josie here? 
Josie Hernandez is the daughter of Jesse and Martha Hernandez. Her favorite subjects are math and biology. Josie played volleyball and is in the softball team now. She wants to attend UCLA to become a veterinarian. The one thing she wishes she could do is to change the world is to have world peace. Way to go. Congratulations, Josie. Let's continue. Alejandro, is Alejandro here? Si. Ah, great. Alejandro Mendez Rosales is the son of Francisco Rosales and Lydia Mendez. His favorite subjects are math and science. He also studies Taekwondo. He plans to attend a university and become a trauma surgeon. Alejandro wishes he could end violence in the society. Congratulations, Alejandro. We'll continue with Enrique Camarena, Ivana Gerbay, and Gael Gonzalez. Is uh, Ivana here? Um, Ivana? Yeah. You want to read your bio? Yes. Ivana Garibay is the daughter of Berenice Cienfuegos and Rafael Garibay. Her hobbies are reading, writing, and doing, doing CrossFit in Mexicali, doing crossword puzzles, and enjoying watching movies. Her favorite subjects in school are math and language arts. When she graduates, she would like to become a successful doctor by having her own consultory with her own degree and become a person who has completely achieved all her goals to strive and strive for more. She would like to thank her family and teachers because they have taught her everything that she needs to know in order to become a kind person. These people have educated her and has shaped her into what she is today. That is the reason why she would like to thank them for everything that they have done for her. Very good, thank you. <laughs> Gael, Gael Gonzalez is here. Come on, Gael. <laughs> Parents? Gael Gonzalez is the son of Mario Gonzalez and Veronica Gonzalez. His hobbies are soccer and basketball. His favorite subject in school is math. When he graduates, he will like to become a police officer. He will like to thank his family because they support him in everything he does. Congratulations. And we'll continue with Willy Moreno, Angelica Razo, Abraham Guzman. Angelica, is Angelica here? Yes, they're both here. Oh, perfect. If Angelica, if you'd come up, please, with parents. Angelica. Our Willy Moreno Student District of the Month is eighth grader Angelica Razo. Angelica is, a, is daughter of Eduardo and Angelica Razo. She has three older brothers, Eduardo, Carlos, and Alex. She's the youngest, youngest of her siblings. Angelica's favorite class is mathematics, which not surprising since her father is a math teacher. She also likes any kind of taco, the color pink, Range Rovers, and pop music. Her dream destinations are international cities of Paris and London. Angelica looks up to her parents and brothers because they're all very hardworking people. She appreciates the good examples they've been for her. Angelica has demonstrated that she's already liked them by earning straight A's and maintaining perfect attendance this school year. Angelica aspires to attend Harvard and would like nothing more than to become a professional violin. Surprisingly, Angelica keeps improving in her studies and ballet. She also wouldn't mind attending a complay concert somewhere in between. Angelica, we're part of you and we hope all of your dreams come true. Abraham Guzman, Abraham here. Any? Uh. Abraham Cano Guzman. Abraham is the son of Ignacio Cano and Amelia Guzman. He has two sisters, Saira and fellow Aztec Nayeli. Abraham's favorite class is history with Miskaya. Some of his favorite other things are pizza, the color blue, and Ferraris. His dream destinations are the big cities of Los Angeles. New York and Paris. Abraham is thankful, thankful to his mother because she has always motivated him to focus on his studies. Abraham remembers that thanks to her encouragement in elementary school, he started to reach his accelerated reader goals. Abraham knows he would like to attend the college and have a great career 
but he isn't sure exactly where to study or for what career. In the short term, Abraham would like to keep earning all A's. In the long term, Abraham wishes to never flunk a year and to graduate from high school. We know you can do it, Abraham. Congratulations. Very good. And again, another congratulations. Congratulations to all our students of the month. And we're going to move on with some additional recognitions. Item G4, this would be employee recognitions. And we'll begin with Cesar Chavez Elementary School. Mr. Santos, so here, why don't you come on up, please. Do we, do we start off with certificated? Or? As you okay. please. So, I would like Ms. Eva Rosa Rodriguez to come up, please. Yeah, right over there. Yeah, absolutely. Right next to Mr. Calderon. Well, first of all, I'd like to start by saying that when I first got to, uh, got to work over there at Cesar Chavez Elementary, when I first uh, met Ms. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, I thought, well, she's a kid. She, you know, she's, been in, you know, she's been in the business for like five, five six years tops. Well, <laughs> lo and behold. <laughs> Little did I know, no, where are you going? Get her, stay, stay right here. <laughs> Little did I know that she, she's been in the business over, no, not over, 20 years, 20 years. She started over at Blanche Charles. She taught first, second, and third. Did an amazing job over there. And then, of course, when Cesar Chavez opened, she, she went ahead and opened the school. And let me tell you, she is an amazing teacher. She has those students eating out of the palm of her hand. <laughs> She does. I mean, I walk in, everybody says, good morning, Mr. Santos. I'm like, that's, I mean, I, I, I asked the board to one day come over and visit. Go watch her classroom. You'll be impressed. She is a proud mom. She has a 10-year-old son. His name is Jose. And uh, he is right now at Rockwood at the, in the ICOE program. And I'm sure he is very proud of his mom. And so... Board of Directors, uh, Trustees, I, I, I give you Ms. Eva Rosa Rodriguez. Let's give a big round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have another amazing person. We have Mr. John Gonzalez, custodian. Now, let me tell you about John. I have known him for about 10 years. But he started off here at the district in 2006 as, as a substitute custodian. And he started working at De Anza. But I met him at Willy Moreno. And at Willy Moreno, he just fit right in. He, you know, he, he was subbing for somebody. And he was there for a very, very long time. And uh, let me tell you, John right now, I can say he is my go-to guy there at, at Cesar Chavez. Um, he never, where are you going, John? It's, it's okay, right here, right here. They're nice people. <laughs> so let me just say, this, this, I mean, whenever I need something, he's the first one to answer the radio. Whenever something has to happen, it happens at night because he works at night, he's, he's the first one there. Um, if ever you need a DJ, that's the guy to go to, okay? <laughs> One thing, shameless plug, yeah, sorry, got to right. do it, got to do it. But one thing I will tell you, uh, you know, John has also volunteered a lot of his time. Because of these DJ skills that he has, he, you know, when we have our Halloween carnival, he goes and volunteers because that's the kind of guy he is. He's, he's there to give to the students and, and, you know, he is not a selfish person. And John, on behalf of the board, I just want to thank you for everything that you do for us at Cesar Chavez. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Santos. Thank, thank you. you. We'll continue. C can can I ahead. just do a shameless plug? Absolutely. Shameless. Just a uh, Lobo Classic 24th this Saturday, the best soccer tournament in the city of Calexico. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Santos. We'll continue with our recognitions. Rockwood Elementary School. Mr. Valenzuela. Good evening. 
Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the board of directors, acting superintendent, for the opportunity to recognize some of our employees at Rockwood. I would like to begin with the certificated employee of the year for Rockwood is Heidi de la Cruz. <laughs> Come on up, Heidi. So I did some rounds today asking a couple of teachers to describe uh, Mr. La Cruz. And some of the words that came were very driven, perfectionist, hard worker, great mentor, dedicated, caring, student-centered. So my description of Ms. De La Cruz is, you know, awesome teacher in person. So most importantly, I want to thank you for everything that you do. At around 3.30 on Mondays or Thursdays or Wednesdays, you'll find Ms. De La Cruz tutoring in her classrooms. She has a bunch of kids and she's going like this and she better do this and you better keep going and don't give up. So she's an awesome motivator as well. I present to you, Ms. De La Cruz. Our classified employee, which, well, I'll just say that I've been hurting for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but, uh, but um, I like to introduce Ms. Elizabeth Rellas, our classified employee of the year for Rockwood. And once again, I asked some of her colleagues, you know, ultimate team player, extremely reliable, kind to children, tremendous amount of initiative. Uh, she has been known to cook a great barbacoa for the entire staff. Um, so I describe her as, you know, I miss you very much. Uh, we <laughs> Congratulations. And she has a lot of children, as you can see. <laughs> One's missing. We'd like to thank you on behalf of the Rockwood staff for all your work and your dedication to our students. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Valenzuela. Thank you. All right. At this time, we again want to thank uh, all of our students, our representatives, our student of uh, the month, as well as our recognized schools for attendance or, and the recognized staff. Uh, outdoors in the hallway, we do have uh, cake, cake and coffee to, uh, for, all, for all of you to partake in. Let's go ahead and take maybe a five minute break and then we're going to reconvene. Okay? So please join us. We'll reconvene our meeting. We're going on to items H, comments from the public. At this time, the board will take any and all comments from the public related to an agenda item uh, or any other items of district business not on the agenda. And we're, we've got a few here. We're going to begin with number one. This would be Alejandrina. Ms. Rangel, see. Testing. Good. Ready? Uh, my name is Alejandrina Rangel. Um, good evening. I work at Calexico High School at the Ninth Ring campus. And we're here this afternoon to voice some important issues and some possible solutions which have existed for a long duration of our time at, at our Ninth Ring campus. Uh, these concerns affect our veteran colleagues, new teachers, uh, future educators, and public health safety. We need an on-site school principal who is dedicated to our ninth grade campus, who will be stationed at our school site, um, who will have the authority to make decisions on demand. Uh, there has been absolutely no continuity. The inconsistency of various administrators have made it difficult to progress more effectively. We have had, in the past six years, nine administrators. Uh, we have a critical communication uh, uh, that has been uh, done through email because of an on-site administrator not being there available on site. Uh, the availability and approachability has been with much distress, especially under extreme circumstances. Students don't know the school principal because she is seldom on site. Honestly, we feel like, picture this, we are literally uh, in the middle of an ocean, Pacific Ocean, and we are in a boat. We're uh, sending all these kinds of signals and flares and uh, you know, waving our flag, yelling, and yet we are left alone in a deserted ocean. 
on a known man's land. It is difficult to gain trust, uh, let alone establish a, a working relationship. Uh, what are we communicating to our staff? There is no room for building professional relationships that make us grow together as we hold each other accountable. Another uh, problem we have is non-student center academic practices across grade levels. We need to establish practices in our district that make sense. Hold students back who need to be held back. Uh, students who are failing uh, seventh and eighth grade, uh, five F straight, and they still get to play a sport, and they expect to be uh, dealt with the same at a uh, ninth grade campus, it's not going to happen. They need credits. Um, our classes that are overloaded, 34 plus kids. I have 35, and they still ask me to get more kids. These kids are low performing uh, students. Special education students are there with this overload, and it's not the best practice for these students. Uh, these students have 504 plans. You know, we really need uh, to uh, make these classes like an intervention class where we have 25 to 30 students. Students are lacking social and emotional skills. We have the lack of psychological and so uh, social counseling. Uh, during the past two weeks, personally, I have had eight students suspended. This week, I've asked for 12 SSTs. Um, Last, uh, by November, I had a student with 68 tardies. I have more students with 20 absences that I know of. 16 out of my 34 students in one period have Saturday school notices. Uh, solutions, we need a culture that has to change. It has to be uniform, starting from kinder to 12th grade. Train counselors who are understanding where teens feel confident and are able to trust them with their issues. Is my time up? If you would just wrap up, Ms. Or close, please. Please let us work together and improve the quality of life of our students and help us build a better tomorrow. Our children are depending on us, the adults, all of us here, uh, to guide them. Let's be the hope that our children desperately need to succeed. We need our, our school principal. We need district-wide intervention and trained counselors. Yeah, thank you. Let me, ask a, let me ask you a question. Yes. When you asked for the SSTs, did the, the administration respond? Did they answer? Yes. Today, I already got four students that are going to community school. Okay, so you get, you got answers. Sometimes they're not answered. They're left alone because we deal with the. No, no. When you requested these SSTs, uh -huh. did you get an answer from the from administration? Not an email. It's being progressed. It's being processed. I didn't get a response back. So you didn't get. No. No. Thank you. Thank you. Continuing with our second speaker, this will be uh, Fidel Pena. He's not here. Okay. Continuing with our third speaker, this would be Mr. Roman. Good evening. Uh, I would like to start by briefly sharing with you um, Calexico FFA took 70 plus uh, animal entries to the um, county fair. We did have one animal disease uh, picked out of the fair, but um, it didn't go through auction, but the people that were there were very generous, and the young lady was compensated uh, quite well. However, Calexico's visibility is still lacking. We don't have buyers that are local business or lack of um, uh, important um, personalities going by and celebrating with our students. We did have one of our students, uh, Jorge Barra. He was a reserve grand champion with his steer. He has had that animal since August 2017. And when school started, he brought it onto campus and with the assistance of uh, Ms. Severson, he was able to train and go out there and beat other students that have had many, many years of experience coming through the 4-H. So uh, once again, um, when the fair comes, they would love to see you guys out there. Please uh, keep that in mind. Um, and they've been busy, we've been out there cleaning and as a matter of fact, last Saturday, uh, small animals went out there too. Um, clean up the barn. But the reason I'm here, my three minutes now, huh? It's uh, <laughs> because uh, at the ninth grade, we do see definitely a need for a decision-making authority on site. Let the main campus principal handle the main campus and have someone out there at the ninth grade. If you think that you're gonna send the ninth grade students to the main campus anyway, think about it again. Please walk by the main campus during passing period and take a look at that capacity and consider you're gonna be over impacting that campus with hundreds more students. And um, a district-wide discipline plan will definitely benefit us. It will provide us with a clear 
um, guidelines and parameters, clear expectations and consequences for parents, students, and teachers, so that regardless who the administrator is, there is there a clear minimum of what could happen. I understand that the totality of circumstances will determine every individual case. However, there needs to be some, some type of guidance, especially when you have such a high turnover in administrators. And um, number three, an intervention class. We have students that clearly, clearly, clearly our current system has not been able to get them to succeed. They continue to fail and they continue to fail and they continue to fail and we put them in the same place, the same place, the same place and expect them to succeed. So with that in mind, just consider that there is a need for a remediation program. Identify the students, provide appropriate interventions and make that a success class part of their co core curriculum. We have AVID classes, we have CTE classes, we have ASB classes, we have honor literature classes at the ninth grade. What about an intervention for those students at the bottom of the barrel? Because they're being left out to dry. So um, the parents also need to be involved. Maybe there could be a field operative walking the streets, knocking on the doors. Not someone that sits in an office, but someone that's actively going out there knocking on doors and seeking the parents to come in. And I don't know, I'm wrapping it up. Uh, it seems like the results of inconsistent discipline across the grade levels and the lack of academic uh, interventions um, has created a large number of students that continue to struggle in our schools. And as much as we're passionate about our profession, we feel that definitely additional resources are needed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Thank you. Our next speaker, Karina. Thank you. Buenas tardes a todos. Nuevamente por segundo año eh, me dirijo a ustedes en fin de convocarlos un poquito a los antecedentes sobre la petición que hicimos a este distrito escolar para la proclamación en el calendario de actividades escolar del autismo de, del día del autismo y mes del autismo. Quisiera nada más eh, poner los ante antecedentes. El tema del autismo es un tema donde se maneja muy poca información y quiero hablarles un poquito de ellos. El autismo es una afección neurológica permanente que se manifiesta durante la primera etapa de la infancia. Es una condición de vida diferente, es una neurodiversidad, más no es una enfermedad. El autismo es, eh, se, principalmente se caracteriza por peculiaridades en la esfera que lo caracteriza, caracteriza la interacción social, dificultades en situaciones comunicativas, comunes, modos de aprendizajes atípicos, especialmente interés por ciertos temas, predisposición a actividades rutinarias y, particular, y particulares en el proceso de información y sensorial. El índice de autismo en todas las regiones del mundo ha estado en aumento en los últimos años y, la, y afecta la compresión y produce fuertes repercusiones sobre las personas, sus familias y las comunidades. La estigmatización y las discriminaciones asociadas a la diversidad en el ámbito neurológico siguen siendo principales obstáculos para el diagnóstico y el tratamiento que trata la cuestión que se debe abordar tanto los encargados de adoptar políticas públicas y países en, de, en desarrollo. Los últimos estudios de la ONU y del Organismo Mundial de la Salud arrojan que uno de cada 54 niños que nacen en el mundo, eh, de ellos nace dentro de la condición del espectro autismo. Esto significa que existe alrededor del mundo más de 1.5 millones de niños y adultos, nada más en Estados Unidos, por lo, ta por lo tanto las cifras alrededor del mundo son decenas de millones. Según las cifras de CELFA, el departamento educativo que provee los servicios a, a, aquí al sistema educativo en California, hay nada más para el Valle Imperial 2.000 familias afectadas dentro de este trastorno que piden servicios a las escuelas. El sistema de las Naciones Unidas ha celebrado la diversidad a lo largo de toda la historia y promoviendo los derechos y el bienestar de las personas con discapacidad, incluidos los niños con diferentes formas de aprendizaje y discapacidad en el desarrollo desde 
perdón, desde el 2008 entró en vigor la Convención sobre los Derechos de las Personas con Discapacidad. El propósito de esta convención es promover, proteger y asegurar el goce pleno y la condición de igualdad en todos los derechos humanos y libertades fundamentales por todas las personas con discapacidad, promover el respeto de su dignidad inherente. Se trata de una herramienta ine inefable para fomentar en la so una sociedad inclusiva que cuide a todos sus, sus miembros y garantice que todos los niños y adultos con autismo puedan llevar una vida plena y gratificante. Gracias, Karin. Muchas gracias. Y tenemos muchas. los botones también, ¿no? Sí, muchas gracias. All right, continuing, next speaker, we have Will Slater. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is kind of beating a dead horse. We've already talked about this. We, uh, um, I got a couple of things I want to address here. Uh, dealing with the, the ninth grade campus. You know, it's, it's been an interesting thing that's evolved over the years. You know, we went from a, a seventh and eighth grade campus to a seven, eight, nine, and we did a big shuffle in the district. Then we went back to a ninth grade campus. And uh, since we became, and now we, we're ninth gate campus extended from the high school. It, it, it's, a, it's almost like we're a bastard child. <laughs> it's, we have no place to fit. We do have the ninth graders. We have them in and out every year, but then they move to the high school, and we really have no representation or continuity in our campus. And this has been an issue we've talked about um, for years under when Pescada was here. We needed to get somebody on our campus that was going to be representative of our campus. And, and we don't have that. Uh, we need somebody that will make decisions for the better interest. We can't have faculty meetings when we're all running across the, the, the every, you know, we got 10 minutes to shut down class and get over there to the high school and so we can be there on time, which I never make on time, to the faculty meetings. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. We, talk about, we talked about earlier that we had the um, uh, video conferencing where we could do that here at our campus and we could do that over at, uh, we could be, all be apart, we could meet at our campus because we, we are our staff. And uh, that, for some reason, has fallen through the, through the hole. It's disappeared. It's not even talked about anymore. Uh, I, I, it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's almost to a point that's like, it's ridiculous anymore. It's like, a lost hope and you know the idea of moving us to the high school uh, somebody's somebody's dreaming on that if uh, if they don't go to a split split school session and something like that because there is no way that school at the high school is going to handle another 800 kids can't happen um, we talked about the intervention classes uh, I'm going to I'm going to skip that principal thing again I think you guys pretty much understand where we need where we need to go with that uh, we need, and, but, you know, uh, we talk about intervention classes. We have a group of ninth graders that are in this uh, school this year. And it is, I've been doing this for 30 years, and this is by far, it's a great group of kids, but we have a group that is by far the worst that I've seen come through, okay? Some of it's not their fault. You know, a lot of these kids come from pff, situations I don't even want to think about. And by not, by not preparing for those kids, we have epically failed them. Yeah, we kick them out, we kick them out, we kick them out, we do this, we do that. But really, if we had positive intervention programs and we thought about doing stuff that we would really work, we knew this was coming, but we didn't do anything about it. And now we're halfway, we're three quarters of the way through the year, and what are we doing? We're looking at... We're talking about, oh my God, we're going to have all this retention rate, and these kids are going to be, well, these kids are going to come. We haven't done anything for them. We kick them out for what? We are educators. If we can't figure out better ways to intervene on our kids' behalf, we don't need Border Patrol coming in and talk to them. We don't need cops coming in and talk to them. We're the educators. You know, there are intervention programs out there. I was talking with Mr. Padulo. And we were, when we were talking, I said, look, let's get online and look at this. 
30 seconds, we looked and go, look, look, look. We, more stuff than we could read on stuff with bringing computers um, um, uh, into, into the classroom on this. Independent studies where the kids could work on stuff. The success rates of this. I was staggered at how many kids are in independent uh, studies that could come into a classroom. You could take a, an Aurora, a school within a school, and put it in the back part of De Anza, or the ninth grade campus extended to high school, and you could take those four buildings and put those kids back there and work with them and give them something to work with besides what we've done. Have we done that? No. Did we know this was coming? Yeah. What are we doing for next year? I don't want to see another debacle like what we had because we went to somebody else to come up with an idea what to do with these kids and bring the law enforcement class over to our, class, our campus again. That was an epic failure. Mr. Okay. Spader, thank you. Well, all right. I think there are time and we need a and we need a district wide discipline plan that follows up through these kids. We need uh, we need um, uh, something that follows these kids because we know they're coming. Let's do something good for them. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker, Elizabeth. Esquire, Elizabeth. Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Escada. I'm an administrative assistant for our special education department. I have worked for Calexico Unified School District for 21 years. I understand you're willing to give us 5% salary increase, but I'm here to tell you it is not enough because you want us to pay 7%. So really what you're doing is you're trying to direct us to live on 2% less, and this is not right. I know classified give 100, gives 100%. I know many of us give more than 100%. When a parent walks in July, in the middle of the heat, to that school office to register his or her child, and they arrive about a couple of minutes before the office closes, your head school clerks will stay over. She will give 100% because she understands this family has a need, and you want to take 2% from her. When a parent rushes into the office because she has a meeting in 30 minutes and she requ she's requesting an attendance letter, your attendance clerks will take her time from her lunchtime to write out that letter. She's giving 100% more because she understands there's a need for that family and that parent and you want to take 2% from her. When you're, when you're a child, when a student comes in late in the morning and is hungry and the kitchen is closed, your food service assistant will come in and bring out a plate. She's giving more than 100% because she understands that child is hungry and he has a need. And you want to take 2% from her. When a bus driver makes another round because he arrives at the home of a child and that parent is not there, probably running late, not out, it's out of her control or his control, but he understands he can't leave that child alone. He makes another round. He is ma he's giving over 100% because he understands there's the need and you want to take 2% from him. I can give more examples, but I probably don't have time. So I'm here to tell you, I know a lot of our classified give more than 100%. It is, and it is not fair that you want to take 2% from them. Thank you. Next speaker, Maria Bravo. Maria Bravo. Good evening, Maria Bravo. My colleagues and I have been offended, belittled, and threatened by your negotiations team with their best and final offer. But I have some facts for you to be, to be reminded of, just a few. Administrators come and go every time there is a new administrator, it is a classified staff that ends up training that administrator on how to do their job. And many secretaries have trained a few that have come through their department or school. Administrators make errors, which the classified staff has to clean up and correct the issues. We, the classified staff, is what makes the administrators succeed in the areas that they lack. Yes, they have their degrees, but they lack in the experience and in the knowledge. We, the classified staff, are the frontline employees to receive the angry parents and the confrontational side of that emotion. And what does the administrator do? 
they make those parents wait and calm down in the front office or ask them to return and schedule an appointment. It is the classified staff that are the first to assist a, a student and or the parent in their time of need. It is the classified staff that transports the students to and from school and some do so without any assistance. Whenever there is a field trip, you need chaperones in order to supervise the students, but yet some bus drivers don't have those chaperones. They must have their eyes on the road and also inside the bus. We multitask and do many other duties that we shouldn't, and yet we are the lowest paid in the district. What we do for this district is priceless, priceless gentlemen. I will end with the following statement. We are 400 plus members that work and take care of this district. Therefore, you have the responsibility to take care of us as we take care and manage the district. We are priceless, priceless. And you wanna put a percentage next to our NOE or the salary schedule? No, gentlemen, think twice, think again. We are priceless, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Marina Peralta. Good evening. My name is Marina Peralta Luque, and I'm a school secretary for the discipline office at Calexico High School and part of the negotiating team for CSEA. As you know, we met again with the district to continue our negotiations. The directive that was given by this board sums up to a 5% increase with a 7% decrease from our salary. I am stating again, we are not accepting a 2% decrease. Aside from this, we still need to negotiate insurance. Insurance has always been the go-to card for the district when negotiating salaries. Classified has always had to sacrifice their salary increase and COLA to keep district paid insurance. What is your directive now, aside from the 2% decrease? How much more is it going to be? Classified employees are essential to the district. Treat us with dignity and the respect that we deserve. Thank you. And the final speaker, Pat Bristol. Pat Bristow. Good evening, board members and all my colleagues and every parents and uh, teachers. My name is Pat Bristow and I am the CSEA Chief Union Steward. Also, I'm part of the negotiating team and with all my colleagues, we have been disrespected and we have not signed our contract. We are the backbone. We are the ones that put a Band-Aid when students are hurt. We are the ones that feed the students when they're hungry. We are the ones that greet the parents, get them at ease when they have to be there at long hours. We are the ones that are put extra hours in the summer. We, they call us in to two weeks before our contract and we're the ones that register all our students. We are the ones that input all the information of medical as well as their parents, uh, all the register, and we're the ones that have all other, other information in our computers. We also, also, we have not signed our contract since 2015, 16. We are right now in a stage, it's very critical. We give 100% and all my colleagues here, CSEA, I think they agree to me. Thank you very much. I hope that you make a decision and that we can sign our contract. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes public comments for this meeting. Looking at the next item, item I, consent agenda. Do I? Which, which topic, Mr. Slater? Ninth grade and CSEA? Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Sager, quick. Okay, I'll get back to this again. 30 years I've been here, and uh, 30 years, this dog and pony show never changes when it comes to negotiations. 
<laughs> it, it's, it's absolutely, it saddens me that at some point we have never arisen above the level of where we're at with this. It always comes to hostile negotiations. Uh, our CSEA brothers and sisters, we can't do without them. This is a, this, this is a machine that works. We, they, it's, uh, they're, they're, they're like a backbone to everything we do. If there's anybody that we can't function with, we can't function without them. As teachers, we need them in every aspect. You, you can't continue. We come in here and we see these, these principals get up and they give these accolades and what a great deal these teachers did and how good these CSEA and he, look at the time he donates. And then you come back with 5% and 2% you're going to pay back? It's like, uh, it's going to, you know what, that's just lawyer math. <laughs> We've seen that before. It doesn't make sense at some point. You guys also are educators, you're leaders in this community. You need to think beyond what these stupid lawyers tell you. Yeah. They, yeah. they feed, they feed, they feed off of bad decisions by administration because that's how they make money. If you look back in history, some of the stuff that has happened, and I'll go back to was it GCI or GCR or whatever that lawyer outfit was or the crap they ran us through. Look what they did to Sweetwater. We need to take her and treat people with respect in what they do and give them their money. I got a good suspicion that our CSEA members are not equally paid with other CSEA members in this valley. Just like, just like our teachers are not equally paid with other districts in this valley. If you think this is going to go away, it's not. Because this is just going to get worse. It's not going to go away. It's going to continue to amplify. This is, we need to settle this. Treat people with respect and the dignity that they give. Now, I, you know, I just, uh, I, don't know, I don't know where to go with this. Oh, what it's, it saddens me mostly because I look at what CSEA is going through with this. Well, what do we as the teachers union have to look forward to? We've let you put us off with this MOU garbage that we've been negotiating, well, we should be negotiating right now with these guys. Instead, you're, you guys have got these guys out there working on this, and then what, we get to come to the table, and this is what we get to look at? Are you gonna give us the same kind of garbage? I'm gonna tell you what our answer is gonna be for that. No. Oh. <laughs> All right, so again, that completes our comments from the public. I'm looking at item I, consent agenda. Are there any comments from the public on any of those items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'm just going to do that quick. Consent agenda. Members, any discussion or entertain a motion? motion There's a motion approved by Mr. Calderon Jr. Um, Yes, uh, second. There's a second by Mr. Uh, Calderon. Uh, all those in favor of consent agenda items? Say aye. 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 Motion approves. At this time, we're going to reconvene back to closed session to finish up some business. Okay? And then we'll come back out. All right. The board will reconvene back to close or open session. This time, nothing to report out from closed session. We're going to continue with the agenda with item J. J1, superintendent's report. All righty. Uh, good evening, trustees. I uh, want to give an LCAP update. So we had our LCAP community um, and parent forum to address goal six, which is safety at Rockwood Elementary School on March uh, 13th, 2018 from 6 to 8.30 PM. Uh, we had a great ter parent turnout. Uh, representing all the different school sites in the district. Uh, the safety presentation, uh, that was presented to the school board on March the 8th. Uh, that one was shared with the parents at the LCAP meeting. So that way we gave all the parents, uh, showed the PowerPoint of the safety plan that we have for the district as a whole. 
I'd like to give a couple of staff acknowledgements. I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Ernesto Valenzuela. He's our principal of Rockwood Elementary School. He's done a great job of reaching out to our local businesses and community. Actually, they, he secured a $1,000 donation from uh, Food for Less. And also like to acknowledge uh, Ms. Claudia Montaño. She's our director of state and federal projects. Uh, she's been writing community grants and uh, through Walmart, she's actually been securing a lot of funding for our sites. And so one of the sites that uh, has already been awarded is Blanche Charles with a donation of $750. And so I'm very hopeful that some of the other sites will also you know, receive some donations as well. I'd like to report uh, our career day. Uh, we had a career day at Jefferson Elementary School. Uh, I was able to attend the career fair. It was held uh, actually yesterday at Jefferson. Uh, there was an excellent turnout of different agencies and professionals presenting to our students, all the way from kinder to sixth grade. Um, the students were excited about the presentations and uh, there was definitely rich information that was shared with them that they could walk away about the different careers that are out there. And i also like to acknowledge and thank uh, Trustee Lorenzo Calderon uh, for being there and actually he was there as a, as a presenter. Uh, also was able to attend the sports banquet for Calexico High School. Uh, that took place on Wednesday, March the 14th. Uh, if you recall at the last board meeting, uh, we recognized, uh, I think it was five CIF teams. Uh, and so it was definitely exciting to be able to be there uh, and recognize our athletes which are doing such an excellent job of representing our, our community. Uh, some upcoming activities. Uh, we do have open house for Calexico High School ninth grade campus. That will take place uh, this coming Tuesday, March 27th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And then we'll also have open house at Calexico High School main campus on Wednesday, March 28th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And then uh, lastly, we do have uh, the catapult system uh, that we talked about at the last board meeting. Um, it's in place, it's operational. One of the things that we've been noticing is that it has great communication uh, capability in the sense that any staff member can report, for example, if there's an incident or if there's an emergency or if there's a drill, uh, which we're able to then address immediately uh, through the catapult system. And so there will be more training that will be provided, more access to staff, but so far uh, we're very impressed uh, with the system. And then lastly, also with the catapult system, it also has the capability of uh, being able to um, uh, use as a tool to the parents or to anyone really to be able to report bullying. And that way we can address it. And so that will be something that will be placed on our uh, websites as a link. That way bullying can be um, reported and it can be addressed. And that's all I have to report. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Okay. Item J2, Measure V update. Good evening, trustees. I have a Measure V update for the Citizens Oversight Committee. We had a committee meeting on yesterday, um, beginning at 5.30 until about 6.45. Um, in that meeting, we're going to bring to the next board meeting a recommendation to fill the two vacancies on the um, committee uh, for committee members. So the, the committee made a determination and they um, have some recommendations to bring to the board at the um, April 19th meeting. So that'll be coming forth from the Citizens Oversight Committee. Also here tonight to give an update on the project is Mr. Jimmy Sanders and he's gonna make a presentation this evening. So we currently have the uh, student parking lot uh, project out to bid. Um, uh, it, uh, the bids are due at the uh, end of April. And so we wanted to update the board with, uh, with the final design and present a schematic on that, uh, on that student parking lot. So, so this is the uh, proposed uh, uh, student parking lot uh, that um, 
is upgraded at the current, current uh, Ward Field uh, parking lot location. The project includes uh, all of the new hardscape to uh, access the school from the parking lot. So in, in addition to uh, modernizing this parking lot, we have a student entrance here, a hardscape and landscaping, and hardscaping and landscaping in between the baseball field and the existing uh, basketball court. So what we're, we, we're uh, going to provide there is a very nice uh, student entrance uh, from that uh, student parking lot. Uh, also included in the project is a student drop-off area. So there'll be, there's one entrance here, and there's the, this is an exit, and so the, the students will be able to come in and drop off in this area here. There's a, a physical barrier, a physical landscape barrier in between here so that you don't get uh, cross traffic so that we create uh, a CDE uh, approved um, and designed uh, student drop-off and uh, loading area. Now, in addition to that, one of the design requirements was that we needed an area for the uh, sports buses to come in and park uh, for the athletic events. And so uh, during non-school hours, this will also uh, be used to park buses along that, um, that curb there. And uh, that, that lane there is wide enough to be able to park buses and for traffic to still be able to pull around or, or you know, you can, you can park two buses and the one behind can pull around and still, uh, still get out or, or, or come in and access that curb. Okay. So part of the project is we've, as we've reported to the, the board previously, that it will need to be phased. Um, as you can see here, this is what it will look like when it's totally done. But because these relocatables will still be in place when we complete the project uh, this summer, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna, to um, complete all of the improvements here, but then we're going to have to provide a diagonal there that will be in place until we can remove these modular structures here and relocate those uh, over to the, um, the ward field overflow parking. Okay. And our, our last slide will be the, the entrance gate elevation. So we wanted you to be able to see what the project is going to look like when it's finished. So if you're standing uh, in this location here and looking towards Ward Field or the student entrance there, you'll see uh, two gates. One, the gate on the right would be the gate that would, would uh, serve Ward Field, and then the gate on the left would be the gate that would take you in between the, the new uh, restroom facility and the softball field and, and into uh, uh, student access for the high school. So we we have a nice uh, steel fence there with some columns and a and a, a steel beam on top so that you mark your entrance and create a a a a, uh, a well designed and and marked entrance for students and for the public to Ward Field. Okay. Any questions? I had one question, Mr. Sanders. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> question came from the community regarding the walkway from the parking lot to the campus. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, AD accessible, but will there be lighting? Yes. On that? Okay. Yes. Just so, because of the evening or mm -hmm. after school yes. sports programs. Absolutely. Yes. In addition to to lighting uh, the the parking lot and providing the, the current light levels at the parking lot, we also light okay. that that path of travel. So it's considered what we call an accessible path of travel. Um, which includes not only a, a you know a surface that that meets certain slope requirements, right? But it also includes a lighting f for uh, for night access. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, we just purchased a chain link fence with privacy slats, mm -hmm. brand new. Is that going to be taken down? No. And replace as part of this here? Yes. Yeah, so so at at this point here, we have we we show that steel fence. So we're we're going to take that steel fence out one panel just to create a nice entrance. And then after that, we're gonna tie into that chain link fence with the privacy slats. Okay, and I assume that you're gonna pull our ticket boot um, kind of box up, out, yes. correct? Yes, yes, that's, that's right. correct. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay. I don't have any. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Mr. Sanders. Thank you. Oh, uh, yes, thank you, thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Randall. <clears throat> so this area here uh, 
in the original uh, plan or the original design, we, we had showed that as a possible space for additional parking. Um, it, the, the layout was forced. You know, we could force some additional parking spaces in there, but we were just burning the space and, and we were using a lot of space, but not really providing that many spaces, right? And so um, it was determined that that space would be, would be better used for a uh, sports facility storage area. So the proposed part of this project would include uh, removing the uh, uh, existing handball courts there and providing uh, an area for, uh, for all of the sports to store their storage containers there uh, for the sports programs. But don't they use, that's why I want the principals here, don't they use the, what's that? Handball courts. What, don't they use the handball courts, the students? Not really. Not really. Yes, now? I know I used to go to the handball courts and play. I, I, well, I know that at one time they, they were used. Uh, I know at this point, um, I think they're also a safety hazard. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there's a gap, I think, even between the walls that are separating the actual. Really? Walls. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there, there would, uh, it would be a, a capital improvement project to, to bring those up to standards to be able to be used. Uh, so uh, we, we understood that they, they weren't being utilized and so that that space could be better utilized for, uh, okay. for sports well, storage it, areas. I believe Aurora is requesting one to be yes. Yeah. Yes. So they're, they're still in use. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, these particular. I just yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Sanders? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Sanders. Thank you. Thank you. The public? We already had public call. Um, nothing else? No. All right. Let's continue with association updates. J3? J3? J3. Oh, CSCA? CSCA. Good evening. So I'd like to introduce our members. Um, so if you're still here as a member of CSCA, please stand up. So the dirty little secret of unions is we don't get to pick our own members. It's actually the district that picks them for us. And man, you have done a great job. And so I want to acknowledge them. But in saying that, I want to turn back to the point that this is the family of this district. These are our working families of our community here in Calexico. These are our working families that we chose to do this job for our students here in Calexico. As we move forward in this process, uh, there are a couple different topics I want to bring up. One is I want to talk about where we are in negotiations. So we had several speakers. They're very eloquent. I'm not going to uh, give you a lot of uh, repetition of what they said. Um, they were correct. Uh, but there are aspects that weren't touched. So we know the proposal as it stands, if you add it all together and look at it as a package, is a pay cut for CSEA members. That is a fact. And then I'll take you one step further. This PERS issue, which we'll deal with in a moment, if we pull that out and we don't look at that and we just look at the 5%, the salary schedule still doesn't meet the minimum wage requirement for this year. January, it becomes an issue again. And then the following January, it becomes an issue again until we hit $15 an hour under the governor's minimum wage law. That's how low it is. We have to deal with this issue. And so uh, as we talk about the PERB issue, I'd like to say a couple things. All CSEA is proposed in this process is for the district to remain cost neutral on this issue. The contract says the district will pay it. This board has adopted two different resolutions, including people that are actually still on the board today, saying the district will pay it. 
Our members have stood up and said they will take it over any day of the week. And in return, they ask that that money that's being paid now just move over so they can pay it. Don't make money off their back. Keep it revenue neutral. That 7% will not go in their pockets. It will come right back out immediately and go to PERS. And they'll happily accept that. On the ULP, PERB issued a complaint. They issued the complaint on January 22nd. Uh, and uh, they've at least uh, found uh, some credibility in CSEA's allegations on this issue. CSEA has continued to bend over backwards to say that we will settle this with this district. Going to hearing does not help students. And I don't pretend to know uh, your attorney's legal position in this, but here's what I would say, and here's what I would ask you to do. This isn't the first time I've had this case on this topic. This isn't the first time I've taken it to PERB. I don't know if your attorney has that experience. We're willing to settle this issue. And so I'm just asking you check. Just check, ask the question. I don't think it's as straightforward as you may be being led to believe. Uh, then the last thing I would say is we were shocked uh, on the district's declaration of impasse. We met for hours that day. We had what was otherwise productive session. We have done a lot of work as two teams and I want to give credit to the district team in this area. We've done a lot of work and a lot of good work and we are very close to a contract we can all be proud of. This issue with the economics is what's creating the problem, the pay cut. But other than that, we'll have a contract we can all be proud of. Uh, but we were shocked that after making so much movement and after uh, thinking that, hey, this is going to work, the district team says, hey, give us an hour. We're close. We could get there. Give us an hour. And it's about between, I think, 4 and 5 o'clock at this point. The district comes back past 7 o'clock and says last, best, and final. We were left at the, the table under the impression we're close. And then they came back with this uh, impasse threat. And then you have after that day where we received a letter from the district saying, hey, we've received new parameters and we can return to the table, which was yesterday, where we didn't receive a single proposal from your team. So we sat in here all day and we didn't get anything accomplished. You're paying for it either way. And that doesn't help students. I've worked with Mr. Weiler in a lot of cases, and you've seen some of them here. I think you need a fresh, fresh set of eyes on this issue. And then the last thing I would say is I was really surprised that in the district's final proposal on their last best and final, that they snuck a provision in that we're not allowed to talk to you. We had never discussed that once in bargaining. But all of a sudden, they shoehorn this line in, saying not only that we're not allowed to talk to this public body, we're not allowed to talk to any public body. Needless to say, we're not gonna agree to that. We have a constitutional right. We're here. But my point is, how do we move forward? The gentleman up here was right. He was really eloquent. It just escalates. And that doesn't help kids. Let's get back to focusing on kids. Thank you. Thank you. So ACT, not here. All right. Let's continue. J4, ROP report, none at this time. Looking at J5, board reports, informational items by board members, Mr. Calderon. I'll be brief. Thank you for coming, everybody. Um, And uh, th 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 all I have to say, Carlos, is that I don't like surprises. I don't like to hear things from somebody else. If I'm not hearing news, I need to hear them from you and not from somebody else. That's all I have to say. Thank you. 
Mr. Calderon Jr. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Just uh, congratulate the staff that we're honored today and also the students. That's all I have. Very good. Uh, none for me at this time. Move on to item K. These are action items. Consideration, action, approval for the following items. We look at item K1. It's an agreement between Calexico Unified School District and California School Boards Association for Agenda Online Services. Mr. Gonzalez, anything here to share? No, uh, we have the agenda online services already, and so what we're looking at is uh, doing an upgrade to, well, two things. One, to continue services with uh, agenda online, which is provided by CSBA. And then the second component is uh, this would allow us to do the um, video streaming, and we would also be able to archive uh, our own meetings. Board members, any questions? No. So are there, is there any benefits to this um, that um, we already don't do? Um, one of the biggest benefits that we would have, Mr. Calderon, is the cost savings. And so I'll give you an example. Um, right now, when it comes to the streaming uh, services, we pay anywhere between six and $900 uh, a month, I mean, uh, a meeting. So we have 19 meetings this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you kind of look at the cost of that, uh, it's between 12000 to $18,000 for the service of doing the streaming. So when it comes to this particular uh, service, we'd be paying $6,000 a year for it. However, that would allow us to continue using and doing the agenda online service. But on top of that, we would be able to do our own video streaming. Yeah. Thank you. I have a motion to approve. So motion second. by Mr. Calderon Jr., second by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Action item K2, approval of the 2018-19 instructional school calendar. Mr. Gonzalez. So we're asking the board to uh, approve the 2018-19 instructional school calendar. Uh, we have met with the association, uh, looked at the start date, end date, the holidays, and so this is our proposal to, to the school board. I do have a question on this. Again, just looking at the calendar that was proposed, uh, it appears that between August and September, there's about 75 school days for the first semester. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? And the second semester has 100 and, 105? 105 days. So why is there a 30 day difference between the semesters? I would think they'd be kind of equal in number of days. It's, it it's, it hasn't been equal for years. Uh, the, uh, when we negotiate the calendar, the teachers have wanted to terminate the semester right before the Christmas break. So it's a 30, 75 days in the fall, 105 in the spring. I mean, again, that's just a yeah. five week, what I can six recall, week difference. Yeah, what I can recall from maybe the 90s when we, when we start seeing this was that a lot of our instruction ended or finished around April because the month of May was uh, more toward preparing for CSTs. So they didn't take into account those days as part of the, uh, the, the instructional piece of the year. So I'm just asking questions. It would mm -hmm. be a benefit then to start the school year? I mean, I think it's starting on August 20. It'll be the week after. And other districts in the Valley are starting on the 20th, about eight days sooner. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't we start a little bit earlier like other districts allow for an extra week of instruction in that mm -hmm. first semester. And again, I think the other observation was the, the year ends June 17th? Mm -hmm. It's our 18th. 19th. Correct. June 19th, which is yeah. very late in the year, I yeah. think, from what's been in the past. And it would start August late also. We wouldn't be... The so yeah, I'm sorry, why, why wouldn't we just start a little sooner and end sooner like other districts? Mm -hmm. The other thing is for summer school, mm -hmm. summer school is five weeks. It's the same, Six, same five weeks. Yeah. So summer school would start June 24th? Around there. Mm -hmm. The Monday? So everything is a week after. Because teachers have to check out. And summer school teachers have already checked Monday out. Monday the 24th. Mm -hmm. So it would end August, first week of August? Last week of July. Which is already kind of pushing mm -hmm. into the summer. Those are just my observations. And those are things we discussed with ACT. We actually laid out a calendar of um, what it will look in the weeks in between. Um, part of the discussion that we had um, is the, the heat that sometimes it's it's hotter in the month of um, was it August when we come in compared to the June dates. 
And it's still hot in June, too. It's hot either way. <laughs> well, then, if we have yeah. issues, then why don't we table this and mm -hmm. bring it back? I'm just I know that the associations have reviewed it. It's just these are mm -hmm. observations just that I'm mm -hmm. puzzled about. What? There used to be a common yes. calendar. The CSCA mm -hmm. review? No. I'm, those are just observations I had that were kind of concerns. I know it's ACT review that or is somebody? Correct. It is a negotiated calendar yeah. with ACT. I don't know. Would it benefit to table it or look at it? I don't well, know. if there's questions, uh, I don't see why not. Would there be any benefit in bringing it back at the next Is there a rush? I guess my question would be what would the board want us to take a look at as far as concerns? I'd say maybe talk, my, my opinion, maybe talk to the groups mm -hmm. about the idea of starting maybe that week earlier, ending a week earlier, starting summer school earlier. I know that uh, we did uh, meet with ACT on this one, and uh, they're not they're here, here to uh, be able to uh, talk about the reasons and rationale that they had behind it. Um, <clears throat> one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the, the rationale was, um, you know, it just seems that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> every time when it comes to the start of school, you know, uh, it just seems to be pushed earlier and earlier where um, what they were looking at is, like Ms. Ramirez mentioned, the <clears throat> heat being a factor. You know, it seems like in other, uh, you know, districts and other places, you know, the start time is really closer to September. We here in the Valley, uh, living in the conditions that we live in, uh, we have the start time being pushed earlier, and it, our reality is that August is the hottest month you know, more so than in June. So that was the one thing that they brought up uh, was their rationale as far as why they were requesting to have a later start date. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we looked at was summer school. And when we looked at summer school, we looked at the impact and if it was going to be <clears throat> something that would be doable. Um, so we did actually sit down. We laid out <clears throat> the instructional you know, calendar for both uh, the instructional year and for summer school. And one of the things that was our concern initially was, well, if we end so late, then is that going to have an impact on our summer school programs? So in reviewing it, we noticed that we would be able to uh, work our summer school programs in the summer and not end late in, in July. We'd actually end around the same time that we always end. About the twentieth. Right. I just have questions on the dates. And well, it, it, maybe it's because you work for another district and and you see your calendar. I mean, no, it's multiple districts. Well, it's multiple. I mean, I start what, what I'm getting at is the same three. weather I'm, is in El Centro, August. Brawley, and so forth in the summer. And, so. And we did look at we compared all the districts. We got the data, and there are some districts that start the first week of August. Others start the third week of August. Others start the second. So everybody has different start dates. We're probably the only ones wanting to push it towards a week after, I think. Right. I think the, the one thing that we looked at that we wanted to make sure that we had in place uh, that we were comparable was all the holidays. Yes. So when it came to Thanksgiving, when it came to the um, spring, break, spring break, break, when it came to the winter break, mm -hmm. for example, all those, we wanted to make sure that we were aligned. And mm -hmm. the reason for that is because we have a lot of employees that uh, <coughs> don't necessarily, that work in Calexico, but don't uh, live in Calexico. Uh, but by having comparable calendars, you know, we would basically be all be letting out during those holidays at the, at the same time. You know, from the, uh, from the educator's point of view, counselor, somebody that has actual contact with students and not sitting just in an office doing all the other things. This is three weeks less of preparation for AP exams, just so you know. For the semester? Yeah. First semester. And then in June, in my opinion, my opinion, some kids start checking out. So. I don't know. It's up to you guys. Anyway, is there an urgency for this? Is there an urgency? There's always an urgency yeah. to try to get the calendar yeah. approved. Um, but again, because we're planning for our summer, our summer um, MOUs, we have that pending on dates. True. And um, we had already 
brought to the board some tentative uh, PD for the 23rd because we had sure. ha had previous conversations with ACT and that, that this is the direction that they wanted to go. So then maybe I'll ask this, you know, I still am not 100% comfortable, but I'll ask that do we review it this coming year, keep look at the factors, consider possible changes or alignments, Okay. you know, observe it this coming year. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, any other discussion, gentlemen? No? Is, no? I'm done. Mm. Any, how would you like to proceed? Well, do you want to table it or do you want to approve it? All it takes is one to say no and mm -hmm. it's going to get tabled. I say move, move it. I mean, motion it. I move to approve. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon. Second. Second by Mr. Calderon Jr. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye with the idea that we study it. All right, let's continue. Uh, moving on to item K3, accounts payable, pre-list, and addendum. Any, any questions, gentlemen? I motion to approve. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon, Jr. Second. Second by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. motion passes. Item K4, variable term waiver for Alejandro Camarillo. So, Mr. Camarillo, <clears throat> he is our welding teacher at Calexico High School. He is working on his CTE credential. So once he completes his program and gets his uh, CTE credential, he'll have the EL authorization as part of that. In the meantime, uh, in order for him to work with uh, EL students, uh, he needs a variable term waiver. Uh, and so that's why we're bringing that to the board. How many waivers can they get like this? Um, this would be, I believe, his uh, third. third. And so um, when it comes to this particular waiver, waiver it's for an EL authorization. Uh, I'd have to double check on that one, Mr. Calderon. Uh, it could be up to five, but uh, he can still get a waiver at this point. Okay. Other questions? I'm, I'm motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Calderon, Jr. Second. Second by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Continuing with item K-5, this is a resolution for implementing pre-qualification of construction contractors. Sir. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, I already know, but it's good for the public to know public why we're doing this. <laughs> okay. So this item is here before the board um, as we are moving into construction for um, our Measure B project, and um, since we are going to be applying for state funds, for matching funds, as of January 1st, 2014 through January 1st of 2019, for those projects that are um, receiving or, or applying or slated to receive funding under the Leroy F. Green School Facilities Act of 1998, um, this is a requirement that the vendors go through the pre-qualification process. Uh, Mr. Sanders presented on this back in, I think, in December and also in January. And what we did was we um, received a couple of proposals from outside companies that would provide this service, and they were very expensive, like $50,000. So in lieu of that, um, we um, worked with our legal, and they had already a pre-developed packet that they had done for other districts um, for this very same thing. And um, we were able to... Um, you know, customize it to Colexico, and what you see before you comes from our legal department. It's a, the pre-qualification uh, pre process for all of our vendors for those projects for uh, Measure B. Um, it's Measure B, um, since those are the projects that we're going to work on to receive or apply for state matching funds on. So that's the purpose of, of this year. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Randall. Questions, gentlemen? Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Calderon Second. Jr. Second by Mr. Calderon. This is a resolution. So, Mr. Calderon? Aye. Mr. Calderon Jr.? Aye. Myself? Aye. Motion passes. Resolution passes. Moving on to item K6, resolution declaring April 2018 as Autism Month. Do we have a... Do we have the declaration? Can we read it? And would you read it, please? Sure. Declaration of Autism Month. <clears throat> Autism is a permanent neurological disorder that becomes visible in the early stages of infancy. It is a disorder that does not discriminate against gender, race, or social status. Autism is a disorder characterized 
by the way it affects social, behavioral, and communicative abilities in children and people affected since birth. People with autism display certain behaviors such as the inability to have normal social interactions, atypical learning abilities, and special interest on certain topics. Having routine activities or schedules and the difficulty to process sensory information are also predominant symptoms. Considering that, at the rate that more professionals are becoming experts in diagnosing autism, more children are being diagnosed on the spectrum. This results in one in 54 children at a national level being on the spectrum. And the figures show that the United States, in the United States, there are 1.5 million people affected by this disorder. In the Imperial Valley alone, there are 2,000 families who are affected by autism spectrum disorder. Considering that, the rate of autism is high in all regions of the world, and the lack of comprehension produces strong repercussions against children, their families, and their community. Stigma stigmatization and discrimination associated in the diversity within neurological scope continue to be the main obstacles and challenges that people with autism face. Considering that there is no cure for autism, it is documented that if people with autism receive the proper treatment at an early age and continually throughout their life, they will live lives that will allow them to integrate socially and eventually branch into the workforce. Helping control their symptoms and stopping their disability from progressing can help people with autism cope with daily activities that are often impossible for them to do. Considering that, People with autism require special services and community support to ensure that their health and security is taken care of. Families also require support because of the psychological and financial strain that comes with having a child with autism. Considering that, the United Nations General Assembly declared in unanimity April 2nd as World Autism Awareness Day in order to highlight the need for contribution to the betterment of quality of life for people with autism so that they can live ful fulfilling lives as members of society. Therefore, it is settled that I, Carlos R. Gonzalez, declare the month of April 2018 as National Autism Awareness Month within the educational and student community in the city of Calexico. The district encourages that all employees and students participate in the activities within the National Autism Awareness Month within our municipality. This can be done by wearing blue one day out of the week amongst other activities that will be taking place in order to bring awareness with the means of educating the public about autism and creating a better community for people with autism. The foregoing resolution was at a regular meeting of this board held on March 22nd, 2018 by the following vote. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. A motion to approve. There's a motion by Mr. Carlos Jr., second by Mr. Calderon. So this is a resolution. Mr. Calderon? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Resolution passes uh, for the Autism Month. Declaring Autism Month. All right. Thank you, Ms. Karim. We'll continue with item K7, another resolution on the student safety in California public schools. Would you like this read, gentlemen? Resolution read? Doesn't matter if you want to, but. All right, Mr. Cornelis, you're on the roll. Sure. So this was brought to us by uh, CSBA, and so at their uh, recommendation, we're bringing it to the board for approval. The student safety in California's public schools. Whereas our public schools are charged not only with supporting student achievement, but also providing a foundation for mental and physical health, personal growth, and civic engagement, and whereas, Student safety is a prerequisite for consistently high levels of academic and social development. And whereas, violence and harassment can not only alienate students from their peers and their environment, thereby impeding learning, but also cause injuries and fatalities. And whereas, in its May 2017 study, Indicators of School Crime and Safety, 2016, the National Center for Education Statistics found that 21% of students aged 12 to 18 said they were bullied at school. And whereas in the same study, 16% of high school students reported carrying a weapon at any point during the previous 30 days, and 4% reported carrying a weapon on campus during the previous 30 days. 
And whereas, the study also noted that 4% of students had access to a loaded gun without adult permission, either at school or away from school during the school year. And whereas, the horrific prospect of school shootings made an end delible impression on the national consciousness with the Columbine massacre of 1999, and whereas more than 150,000 Americans have experienced a shooting on campus, campus since the Columbine tragedy and hundreds of lives have been lost as a result, and whereas gun violence on school campuses, while relatively rare, represents a particularly egregious and unacceptable threat to the lives of students, teachers, and staff across the country and whereas the recent massacre at Parkland, Florida's Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School took 17 lives and shocked the conscience of the nation, and whereas gun violence in schools occurs in America, America with frequency and a severity that is unparalleled anywhere in the world, and whereas exposure to trauma can adversely affect a child's health for the rest of their life, and whereas Calexico Unified School District supports the right of students and staff to attend schools that are safe and free from violence and harassment, especially life-threatening forms of violence. And whereas all students, regardless of background, deserve access to services that support and enhance their physical, mental, and emotional health. And whereas safe schools provide an environment where teaching and learning can flourish. Disruptions are minimized. Violence, bullying, and fear are, are absent. Students are not discriminated against. Expectations for behavior are clearly communicated and standards of behavior are maintained. And consequences for infractions are consistently and fairly applied. And whereas the most effective approach to creating safe school environments is a comprehensive coordinated effort including school-wide, district-wide and community strategies supplemented with legislation, resources and support at the state and federal legislation level. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the governing board of the Calexico Unified School District has completed and holds regular drills that prescribed in both school site and district emergency plans, that said plans that involve all school district personnel, law enforcement, fire and medical rescue personnel, emergency management personnel, and other, others essential to preventing, mitigating, or resolving any potential crisis, be it further resolved that Calexico Unified School District reviews school site discipline rules and procedures to ensure they are appropriately enforced and that student handbooks explaining codes of conduct, unacceptable behavior, and disciplinary consequences are given to all students, parents, and caregivers. Be it further resolved that Calexico Unified School District will continue to work with a board spectrum of local community stakeholders, local law enforcement, mental health professionals, parents, students, teachers, and staff to take any threats of violence seriously and to develop, implement, and monitor policies and programs that foster and support a positive school climate free from harassment and violence. Be it further resolved that Calexico Unified School District urges the State of California and the United States Congress to invest in wraparound services to prevent bullying, harassment, discrimination, and violence in our schools and to provide funding for programs and staff such as counselors, nurses, and psychologists that support students' mental, physical, and emotional health. Be it further resolved that the Calexico Unified School District asks the United States Congress to pass specific legislation that reduces the risk and severity of gun violence on school campuses and repeals the prohibition against data collection and research on gun violence by the U.S. Center for Disease Control, CDC. Be it further resolved that the Calexico Unified School District urges the state of California and the United States Congress to implement common sense measures that prioritize student safety and environments where all students have the opportunity to learn, grow, and thrive. Adopted this 22nd day of month, month of March in 2018. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Gonzalez. I motion to approve. There's a motion I'll to second. approve by Mr. Calderon Jr., second by Mr. Calderon. Resolution vote. Mr. Calderon? Aye. Aye. Mr. Calderon Jr., myself, aye. Resolution passes. Moving on to item K8, Certificated Employment Report. 
A motion to approve. So motion second. to approve by Mr. Calderon Jr., second by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. K-9, classified employment report. Motion to approve. So motion second. by Mr. Calderon Jr., second by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We convene earlier. Mr. Wilder, is there a need to go back? Uh, Urgent matter to go back? Yes, let's, let's uh, get the Okay, very good. Letter I will go ahead and reconvene into closed session.